In this video, we'll be comparing five different brands of HomeKit motion sensors and see which ones have the features that you are looking for and is the best option for your HomeKit smart home. All of these motion sensors can be used in your HomeKit automations and will give you an alert when motion has been detected, but some brands are slower than others, which can cause delays with automations. And at the very end of the video, I will show you which motion sensor is my favorite. First up is the most expensive sensor in this video and is the craziest looking sensor of them all, Fabaro. This sensor looks the strangest out of all the sensors that we'll be looking at in this video because it uh, looks like a human eyeball. And I gotta say, right out the gate, I am not a fan of this sensor. You'll see why here in a minute. The eyeball twists to open up, which feels weird, and it reveals the battery that's rated to last up to two years. And because this sensor has a round design and does not have any flat surfaces, like all the other motion sensors, this limits you on how you can mount this. The box includes a holder piece and screws so you can mount this on a wall. and or use the sticker to mount it to the wall, but this sticker is not strong at all and quickly fell after I stuck it to the wall within seconds. And the sensor actually busted out of the sensor itself and I had to put this back in. In the home app, a motion sensor is exposed along with a temperature sensor with readings that are slightly higher than the Onvis motion sensor and the Akara temperature sensor. And there is a light sensor exposed as well, which can be used in an automation. There's a LED light that's built in that will flash whenever motion has been detected. You can choose the type of flashes and the colors in the Fabaro app or turn off the colors altogether if you prefer. There is a built-in accelerometer to detect tamper mode that will flash multiple colors at once and you can adjust the sensitivity of this as well. You can also adjust the overall sensitivity for motion and how long the sensor will register that there is motion. Fabaro does not require a hub and connects via Bluetooth 5.0 and whenever I was testing the speed against Akara which works over Zigbee, a faster connection, and Onvis which also uses Bluetooth. Akara was always the fastest, then Onvis, and much later, Fabaro finally detected that there was motion. Fabaro is the most expensive sensor in this video and will actually give you less features than sensors that are half the cost. And speaking of half the cost, Onvis is a great budget-friendly option. Onvis did send me out their sensor for a review, but as always, I will let you know what I honestly think about this. The Onvis motion sensor has a lot of features that you do not get with other motion sensors. It's smaller than the Massive Eve sensor, and it's slightly bigger than Philips Hue. There is the HomeKit code on the side, and a reset pin if you need to reset it. And on the back is two AAA batteries rated for about two years of use. This sensor can be freestanding, or you can mount it to a wall with the included adhesive tape, and it does include extra adhesives in the box which is awesome. In the home app, there is a motion sensor exposed as well as a temperature and humidity sensor. Both readings are very similar to Akara's and it is updated every five minutes. In the Almas app, it will show you a detailed log of when motion was detected within the last day, how many triggers have been done today, and you can even view day by day for up to 31 days. And the app will show you the same data for temperature in a room with a very nice temperature animation. And you can show the day records as well. You can adjust the detection interval, which is how much time to allow between motion detections. And these features are very cool to see on an inexpensive motion sensor that does not require a hub. Though you're not able to adjust motion sensitivity like you can with other sensors. And it's not too, too sensitive out of the box, but this could be an issue depending on where you place your sensor at in the room. Onvis has a 100 degree motion range with about 23 feet of detection distance, one of the lower ranges in this video. And it connects over Bluetooth 5.0 and is slower with motion triggers than Philips Hue. Next up is Eve Motion. Eve is physically the biggest sensor out of all of these in this video. I mean, just look how massive it is compared to the very tiny sensor, Akara. Eve is about as tall as a HomePod Mini, though this sensor does have a feature that no other sensor has, but more on that later on. You can use this sensor freestanding or mounted to a wall using the mounting hole in the back, but screws are not included in the box. The sensor takes two old school AA batteries, which is rated for a very low one year of usage, which is about half the time time of other sensors. But EVE is the only HomeKit motion sensor that has IPX3 water resistance. This means that it can withstand water sprays at a 60 degree angle. So it can be used indoors and outdoors and will work perfectly fine in the rain or in the snow. You could use this outside if you wanted to have your lights turn on whenever you get home at night or to detect motion like in a shed. 
This is great to see, but it connects via Bluetooth 5.0, which again is a slower connection type, and it could take longer to receive motion alerts and automations to run. In the home app, only a motion sensor is exposed. There is a built-in LED light that will flash whenever motion has been detected, which can be turned off in the EVAP. And speaking of the EVAP, the EVAP will unlock a lot more features. You can adjust the motion sensitivity and also to choose to trigger motion only in a dark environment, which is great, especially if using outside or a place that does not get light and you can have a light automatically turn off after a certain time period and you can also see when motion has occurred throughout the day and you can view a list view to get granular readings though you can't choose specific days like with onvis it will show you the time of day that motion has occurred and a dark colored clock means it was at night and you can even see how long the motion occurred for the best part about the eve sensor is that it has very strong privacy and no data leaves your home everything is communicated and encrypted between your home GitHub and your Eve devices. The Eve Motion has a 120 degree sensor, which is on the lower end compared to other sensors and does have a viewing distance of about six to 30 feet, depending on how high you mount it. Whenever I went to do the motion speed comparison test with Eve, the Eve sensor just stopped working. It wouldn't detect motion at all in the Eve or the home app. So I had to remove the batteries and it still did not work. So I had to actually factory reset it to finally get it to work. And when compared to Akaro and Fabara for speed, Speed of alerts, Eve is a little faster than Fabaro, but it's not as fast as a car with Zigbee. This is the new version of the Philips Hue motion sensor that was released at the end of 2021. It's a little bit smaller than Ombus and it has a ambient light sensor at the top. There's a 100 degree motion sensor on the front, which again is one of the lowest. On the back, there is a setup button and there is a screw for a battery compartment that contains two AAA batteries rated to last up to two years. This whole white ring is actually magnetic and it uses a white magnetic piece for mounting. And this allows you to put this sensor in places you can't with other motion sensors. You can move the white piece to adjust the angle by about 30 degrees, or you could use the included screw to mount this sensor on the wall. A Philips Hue bridge is required for this to work and the sensor talks to the bridge via Zigbee. And since Philips Hue is fast with alerts, I'm curious to see if it will be faster or slower than Akara, which also connects over Zigbee. The Philips Hue sensor is designed to work the best with other Philips Hue devices, but it can also work with your HomeKit devices in the Home app. In the Philips Hue app, you can customize when motion has been detected in between specific times of day, and then it can run your scenes from the Philips Hue app or do nothing. And you can also choose what happens after motion has been detected for a number of minutes. Either you can turn off a light or do nothing or go to a previous state. And you can also adjust this for the night behavior as well. There are sliders to adjust the day and night sensitivity along with overall sensitivity with five different motion levels instead of three on the previous model. In the home app, three attributes are exposed. There's a motion sensor, a temperature sensor that's a bit off compared to other temperature sensors, and a light sensor that is exposed that is way more accurate than Fabara's and updates almost immediately after the light has changed. Whereas for Borrows takes much longer to update. There is a minor quirk with using the Philips Hue motion sensor in HomeKit. If you don't want to have the sensor control your Philips Hue lights, say if you want to control other lights in the home app exclusively, then under the behaviors in the Philips Hue app, choose do nothing and you can instead create your own automation in the home app. But if you turn the sensor off in the Philips Hue app, then this will drop the connection in the home app and will not work in the home app. It won't say no response, but if you try to walk in front of it or try to run automations, then nothing will work. But whenever you turn the sensor back on in the Philips Hue app, everything in the home app with motion alerts and automations works fine. When compared to other HomeKit motion sensors like Onvis or Fabara, Onvis was surprisingly about as fast or a smidge slower than Philips Hue. The last sensor that we'll be looking at is by Akara. Akara did send their sensor for a review, but as always, I'll be completely honest with you guys about what I think about this. The Akara sensor is the smallest motion sensor in this video, and it's hard to tell that it's even there. It's a good fit for anywhere in the house, like a living room or bathroom for controlling lights. There's a ambient light sensor at the top, but more on that later on. And I'm really digging the white and gray two-tone design. The bottom gray piece actually twists off to reveal the CR2450 battery, which is rated for up to two years. Also in the box, you get a small stand with an adjustable top piece to really put it wherever you want with the included adhesive pads for the top and the bottom. You can attach this to a wall and adjust the position or you can even hang the sensor upside down, see like under your bed, and you can adjust the sensor 360 degrees to get just the right detection angle. It has a 
very wide 170 degree wide sensor which is the widest HomeKit sensor in this video and that sounds great but later on in the video I'll show you why this could actually be an issue for you. The car motion sensor requires one of a car's mini hubs to work if you don't already have one and it talks to the hub using the older and slower Zigbee 1.2 connection type and not the newer Zigbee 3.0 connection like other car devices. However when I was doing a speed test between Acara, Philips Hue and Ombus, Acara was surprisingly faster than Philips Hue every single time. Onvis was not that far behind, but that's as expected since it works over Bluetooth. As much as I like the design and the speed of Acara, there are many missing features that other brands have that you may want or may need for your smart home. In fact, there's hardly anything that you can change or adjust in the settings in the Acara app for the device. The settings is very bare bones. You can change the name or see what Acara hub it's connected to and the basic information about the device but that's really about it you're not able to adjust the timeout settings and by default a car will stop saying there is motion after one minute so if you have an automation that motion is detected then a light turns on and if you leave the room and turn off the light and then come back within a minute the light will not turn back on because it's still set in a motion detected state whereas with other sensors like onvis or eve you can adjust the timeout settings either lower or higher to fit your needs and unlike other sensors, it won't show you a record of, of how often motion has occurred throughout the day or amount of alerts. I personally don't have a need for that, but if that's something that you are interested in, then you may want to consider Onvis or Eve. And the biggest feature that's missing with Acara is the ability to adjust or customize motion sensitivity. Even though there is a wide sensor, it could constantly be triggering unwanted motion. So you may have to move it somewhere else or angle it differently. I'm surprised that this is not a feature because the Acara vibration sensor has this ability to change the sensitivity and I found that to be very useful. Thankfully, it's not overly sensitive right at the box, but I would like the option to customize how sensitive the sensor is. The motion sensor works with other Acara devices to create automations based on motion and light using the built-in ambient light sensor, which for some reason is not exposed in the home app. Though I do really like the ability to trigger when motion has not been detected in over a certain time. This is great for automatically turn off light or other devices a couple of minutes after you leave a room. And in the home app, only a motion sensor is exposed and there is no additional light sensor exposed like with Philips Hue, even though Acara does have a light sensor built in. So which HomeKit motion sensor should you buy? Well, my favorite of these is Acara. I really like how fast the response times are and the various mounting options. It's missing a lot of the features that I would like, like the ability to adjust motion sensitivity. If you want those features, then I'd recommend going with the budget option on this or E especially on this if you want extensive motion or temperature data. Fabaro is unique, but for the price tag and how slow it is, there are better options out there. Philips Hue works better if you already have Philips Hue lights, and Eve is great if you want to use a motion sensor outdoors. I'd love to hear your thoughts on your, what your favorite motion sensor is down in the comments below, and thank you for watching.